Another pattern in the organizing data series dealing with type codes is called replace type code with subclasses. The motivation here is that you have a type code that's immutable and does affect the behavior of an object. And you want to replace that type code with subclasses of that object. What's key here is this immutability, where notice that the type code comes in on the constructor, gets set, and then it's a private setter, and the object doesn't expose any other functionality to change that type code. Now, if the type code could change throughout the life of the object, then we wouldn't address it through subclassing of that object because changing those types becomes much more difficult. So that would be a different pattern for another time. For now, we're focusing on the case where this is immutable, and we're going to just subclass this employee object. Now, in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is replace this constructor. Since this class is going to become somewhat abstract, and it shouldn't be constructed on its own, our first change is sort of a breaking change, but let's create a factory method to replace that constructor. We'll just call it create, take a type code, and then we can make this constructor private. And at this point we would have to go through any consuming code, replace any use of that constructor with the use of the factory, and then of course run our tests and validate that everything's still working. And once we have this, we can start creating our subclasses. We'll start with engineer. And in this engineer class, we have to return this type in a more hard-coded fashion. So we're going to override that, although it's not an overridable type, so the keyword we're looking for here in C-sharp is called new. Call it public new int type. And this is essentially the behavior of the class that we're demonstrating. All that behavior does is return a type. It would, of course, in a real-world environment, be much more complex behavior. But this is enough for the demonstration. And now here, we can put in a conditional on the factory. See if all this still builds. You might have to create a protected constructor. Okay, let's create a protected constructor here. This is just to get C sharp to work. much better. And now we're building this conditional. You can see that we're going to end up building more of a conditional here. In fact, I think since it's going to be more of a conditional, I'm going to replace this with a switch statement. I believe that's what Martin Fowler does in his book, in fact. And so now, anywhere throughout the consuming code that we're using an engineer, we're specifically using an engineer type, what we're going to get back still satisfies the employee object contract in a Liskov substitution manner. But what we're getting back is an actual engineer object. And one by one, we can continue to create the rest of our objects.
and then we add that one to our factory here. Now at this point, we've replaced all three of them. And so essentially, we should always get into some case in this switch statement. So we never need to return a base employee type. At this point, it would probably be a, an exception. which means that we no longer need to be able to build this employee type. So, we no longer need this constructor here. That wasn't a breaking change since it was private. Make sure everything still builds, everything is still good with the language here. And in fact, we want to go ahead and make this abstract now. So, Make the class abstract. Oops. We make this type abstract. We don't need that setter anymore. And now the new keyword here becomes an override keyword. Let's make sure all of this abstractness still builds. It does. And that's essentially it. We now have these subclasses. So as we're passing these around through the system, we would have strongly typed constraints on these and any additional behavior that would be on this object we would then override that behavior in these subclasses if the type code in this case affects that behavior. And then instead of this constructor we have this factory method. In fact we don't need this anymore. And so now anyone, anything in the system that is creating an employee object is going to use this factory method and it's going to get back a specific employee type based on the type code that it passes in. And that's it for the replace type code with subclasses pattern. Thanks for watching.